Hi guys, welcome back and hopefully you would have already figured out writing the code for the login page uh, which is really good. If not, I'm just going to copy paste the code exactly from the uh, code which is available in our GitHub repo to just save our time and we'll see how it actually works. So for doing that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my GitHub repo over here and it, you can see that it actually has the, exactly the same method that we're talking about. So I'm just going to copy them. I'm going to go to the Visual Studio and I'm going to paste them all over here except for the driver. I'm just going to replace that to this driver because we are using uh, this one and uh, you can see that I need to use the find element uh, by dot uh, uh, maybe name something like that which will actually help me do this so i think there's a lot of typing there rather i can actually type the identifier alone like password and then for the login i can just type login and is that name as well yeah there you go that's it and then what i have did is i have also created two methods here one is the enter username and uh a password this is one of the method and there is a click login uh, which is going to perform a click operation as well so this you can see that this is this is amazing because you have all the business logics sitting on the page and there is no test logic sitting on the page because as i told you the assertions basically happens on the assertion which is the test layer not on the page level layer that is the one of the beauty thing of the page object model in selenium and this is what makes selenium's page object model more accessible and a lot of people are really really using page object model in all their test cases which is really cool uh, and it's very useful while you work for a bigger projects because the, you know the abstractions of the page element sitting in one class file and the test sitting in another uh, class file uh, so as that said i'm just gonna go to my test unit test one.cs over here and i'm gonna quickly create uh, two uh, elements which is the home page uh, is equal to new home page uh, like that and then i'm gonna create a login page uh, like that is equal to new uh, login page i've still not covered the page navigation in here for a purpose you can go ahead and watch the videos over there uh, but as of now I'm just going to leave it but we can cover it later if you want so uh, I can then do like this so on the home page dot we need to click the login uh, we know that if we need to go to the login page of the application we need to click that uh, login link uh, and then once I click that login link I then need to enter the username and password of that particular uh, application so for doing that I'm going to do this login page dot and you can see that I only get the methods, not the properties. You know why? Because all our properties that we have declared over here are all private properties. So you don't get that members being listed on that particular uh, class file, which is really, really cool. So I can directly go over here and then I can just do enter username and password and I can give the username as admin, comma password as uh, password, something like that and then i can do a login page uh, dot click login something like this that's it so this way it is going to perform the uh, test for me which is which is pretty straightforward and simple if you could see that so you can see that now the code is more uh, easier to read because all the the identifiers are actually sitting on a class file and just the test is actually sitting on this particular uh, particular method which is the more easiest way while dealing with a larger project and while you dealing while you are dealing with a larger test something like that and now you can see that once i tried to build this test the test was not actually visible on the test explorer and this is one of the common question which comes to me that why is the test is not coming through there make sure that while you write any test it also has the attribute test over there if not any unit will have no idea to tell you that this is actually a test method so you should tell here that this is a test guy i'm talking about so this is very important attribute uh, sorry annotation that you should be using so once you do that you can see that automatically 
Visual Studio discovered that there is a test being written, which is a login test, and it is ready for us to rock and roll, which is nothing but running the test. So I'm now executing the test and we'll see what happens. So basically I expect the browser to spawn as you can see over here. And then you should click that login and then it's going to enter the username uh, and password. And then it should click that uh, login button for me. But for some reason it is not clicking there, which I don't know why. Maybe the identifier is wrong or something like that. So if I see that particular error, it says that there is no such element unable to locate uh, the button like uh, login with a name. So let's see what's really going on. If I just try to do an inspect of that particular button, uh, you can see that there is nothing called as the name for that particular button. I don't really, really see any of that thing over there. So I can use a, um, uh, a CSS selector this time for the first time. We have never did that. So if I just go to that and to the button login. So I'm just going to use a CSS selector and we can just paste the CSS selector. And if we try to run the test right now, hopefully, because the CSS selector is the only unique selector sitting on that particular page, probably it's going to click uh, the button for us. So let's see what's going to happen. It's entered the username and password. I think I'm wrong. It's not even clicking it. So let's see how to uniquely identify a control. So if I just put a double dollar uh, of um, dot this particular class, ah, uh, no. So it's not even really, really clicking, uh, identifying that particular. But now if I just remove that, uh, BTN, I could able to identify the login button. So maybe it's, it's my bad. Sorry about that. So if I just go remove this BTN, put a uh, dot, maybe I should have put the dot on the top, something like that. So the CSS selector was wrong. So what I really mean in here is if I just do a uh, BTN um, dot you can see that it is actually identifying this time but let's see do you see that it's trying to log in and it logged in the application for us this time instead of just waiting for the button to be clicked which means it is actually working and our test should have hopefully got passed as you can see in here so now congratulations we all have achieved writing our first test and it is also a working prototype code using page, uh, page object model. And this is what I really mean about the page object model. So page object models makes things more simpler and we could be able to write them in a separate class files. And it is really, really easier to read and all the abstractions happens on the class level. The only place where we do assertion is on the test level. But as you can see, we didn't really did any assertion so far. So what is the assertion that we are talking about in here. So once I perform a login, you can see that I see the log off button on that particular screen. So can we just verify that log off button and see if that really works? That's something we can do. So for doing that, I can just right click, do an inspect over here. So you can see that this is a link text like log off, right? So what I can do is I can just go to the home page because this is actually happening on the home page. So what I can do is I can put over here and I can do something like link log off and this link log off is going to perf I'm just going to get probably let's say public bool. So you can see that I'm using a boolean this time. I'm going to say is log off exist. So you can see that this method is going to tell me true or false based on that particular uh, link, like log off or something like that. So it's log off, is that? Yeah, so you make sure that you, you put the exact text. If not, the test is going to fail. And now all you're going to do is link uh, log off dot, and you can see that there is something called as a displayed. So displayed is a property. You can see that once I hover there, it tells me that 
gets a value indicating whether or not this element is displayed so once a person logs into the application this log of text is going to be displayed on the particular ui if that's rendered there which means it's going to give us a displayed option so it's going to return us true if not it's going to return us false so uh, we go to our test this time and we do an assertion so for the first time we do an assertion assert and i really like this method the assert that method assert that is a method from in unit library which tells you that you know do certain operation not like assert pass or assert fail something like that this assert that is more like a uh, like a more natural language assertion where you can tell that assert that the uh, home page dot is log of exist is true so which means we're telling that if this is log of exist button is displayed which returns you true then the test is passed if not just throw me an error you can also tell an exception message here uh, like a message probably you can tell them that uh, log of uh, message log of button did not displayed something like that so that's another way of uh, telling it that this particular button doesn't exist maybe this test will fail if i try to execute this time but i'm just going to run this and we'll see if selenium does some magic for us uh, so i'm saying maybe and there is a reason for that so let's see how it actually works so if i execute this you can see that it enters the username and password and the test got passed fortunately um, the reason why I'm saying fortunately is because if the page takes some time to load uh, to log in to that site then this log of button will not appear and it will take some time by then the us the test will fail over here because the log the log of button doesn't really exist something like that it tells you like that uh, so the test will fail by then but for some reason it could be able to identify pretty quickly and i could see that from 12 seconds it became like 9.4 seconds so which means the test is actually faster than before so which is a good sign and the test is actually passing but don't believe that this test is going to pass for you always the test will fail uh, if there is a delay in the page load time something like that so that's it. So this is how we can actually write a uh, page object model in Selenium and we'll see how it actually works. So I hope you really got the idea of the page object models and how we can write things uh, over here. Again, I'm actually stopping the page navigation concept. I really, really wanted you to go through the videos which I'm gonna put in the descriptions below just go ahead and watch there the video on the page navigation you will understand what i really mean about the page navigation over there it is one of the most important concept of the page object model as well so that's it about the page object model meet you in our next video thank you